Hey, I'm Malay, and welcome back to Cottage Treasures Quilting. So it's a new year, and you're all ready to start your New Year's resolution of starting to free motion quilt on your home machine. We are going to be doing a series, being looking into you learning how to free motion quilt on your home machine. We'll be doing tips and tricks, um, starting from scratch, setting up your machine, uh, starting by drawing with a pencil and paper, uh, tracing on a light board if you have a light board or not, as well as making practice sandwiches and learning to quilt on your machine with fabric erasable pens. I highly recommend them. We'll also be going through um, some of the gear you can get, very cheap, to help like sliding plates and um, free motion quilting gloves. And um, so it's a series, it's going to be three, four, five episodes long and we will start right from the basics and hopefully allow you to learn how to start free motion quilting your own quilts. It gets quite expensive to send them away, so hopefully those who are finally ready to take that jump, or those who are looking to refresh, will enjoy this video. Please subscribe down below, and all comments are welcome, and let's get started. So let's jump right in. I'm going to start off by going through a couple things that I've bought and used to make it a lot easier to free motion quilt on your home machine. First off, you're going to need some feet. Now there are two different kinds that I have. You can see this one. Rarely use this one. I think I used this once actually and put it in the drawer. Never use it again. I prefer this one, a ruler foot. Because I can use rulers with it. So when my machine is set up and gliding, I won't hit my needle with my ruler, which is very important. Now this also comes with a couple accessories, three more extra feet, um, and to be honest I have never used these ones. Some of them like, some people like the horseshoe, which I've noticed, I've seen in other videos. Um, and then this is a little free motion quilting foot, um, just the, the circle, and you, I wouldn't recommend using this with a ruler because um, if it slides on top or underneath and your needle hits it, there's a possibility you'll break your needle. Fabric pens. This one comes in three different colors of chalk, red, white, and blue, depending on whether you're using dark fabric or light fabric. This is a marker, um, which if you spray water on, it will disappear. And usually I spray the water on and then I iron it immediately after. My gloves are quite dirty because they're well used. The gloves have sticky fingers so that it allows you to grip your fabric quite nice. And then the Teflon sliding plate which sticks on your machine and there's a little hole for where your needle will uh, contact the bobbin. Um, this does lose its stick after a while but I find if you use a Lysol wipe it, it's like it's brand new again. So we will go over to the machine and I will show you what it looks like with this stuff on and putting the foot on. So you would start with changing your foot, which is always, uh, depending on the machine, the screw. Um, I'm putting my, which I already have on, my ruler foot. Teflon plate, I have it on, but I will show you how easy it comes off and goes on. Depending on your machine, where your feed dogs is located, you'll want your feed dogs down. Your tension for your, not your tension for your thread, but the pressure that your foot pushes down on is depending on your machine. This will be in your instruction manual. It says to usually set it to about one. And then your tension for your thread is set from two to six, and I have mine set to about five at the moment. I will be using a black thread on white fabric just to contrast the free motion quilting that we're about to do. So we'll talk about the machine real quick. Our machine is a 6500 memory craft from Janome. Um, I believe it's about 14 to 16 years old now. Um, the throat is not as big as you would like it to be when you're free motion quilting, but um, as for space and money towards a long arm, this is the best choice I have, and 
I've done a couple queen size quilts and as long as I start from the middle and work my way out I find that um, this does just, just as nice of a job. Um, so this is our home sewing machine and pretty much every home sewing machine out there has an attachable foot that you can buy to be able to free motion quilt. So this year I'm challenging all of you to try, regardless of the size, to learn how to start free motion quilting. So let's start off by drawing first. Okay, this is this is the number one tip I give everybody is I want you to start drawing at first because I want to build that muscle memory in your brain so when you are sitting at the machine making practice sandwiches or quilting a quilt it just comes to you naturally. So um, we're going to start with bubbles or stones depending on what you want to call them. So one of the biggest things is um, perfection, we're throwing that out the window. There is no perfection. Free motion quilting is an art and everything looks good. So let's start with some pebbles. So you are literally going to draw stones. Now when you're drawing I'd like you to keep your pencil on the paper. Do not remove it. So you will be doubling over lines. I can do this twice, you know, three times and then start another pebble. And I'm going to start another one right here. Now I'm going to make these all different sizes. I don't want them to all be exactly the same. Fill in those spaces, you know, and if you want to double back to another spot, just go back over a line you've already done. These are a great filler. I put pebbles I put pebbles in every quilt I've ever done, to be honest. So, just keep filling in spaces, doubling over lines you've already done. Throw a big one in whatever size you want to make them, small, really small. We're just filling in space and learning a technique. So there's a little little example. Um, I've done them with straight lines where I want to do a little bit different and I will start on the edge of wherever I've started quilting and I will just build the bubbles straight parallel off of each other and even turn if you want. Again, try not to take your pencil off the paper. Because let's face it, when you're quilting you will not be able to unless you are starting and stopping every time. And then I can just go ahead and fill this in. Nothing's perfect. We're just learning the technique. Pebbles and stones. So there we go. Those are the pebbles and stones. Um, we could have made this a little bit smaller of a square. Just I don't really want to fill in this whole area. So again, pencil and paper. This is it's very important to try and build that muscle memory first before you just go ahead and hit fabric because let's face it it's nerve-wracking when you're just going to try and jump on a, to a quilt or a piece of fabric and you're afraid of messing it up so again leave your pencil attached to the paper at all times and just start having fun and drawing I recommend every pattern you ever do learning to do it on pencil and paper or if you do the practice sandwiches, which we'll get into in a little bit, jump into those. Okay, so let's look into swirls and uh, serpentines now. So serpentine lines are just lines with a bit of wave into them. So um, let's say this is the border of uh, your square on your quilt that you're using. You just pick anywhere on the quilt to start and then you'll travel along the line. Little wave in them. Again, keeping your pencil on the paper.
and just keep going to fill in the space. So there's a basic serpentine line. Remembering when you get to the edge again, just travel along the border of uh, your square on your quilt um, to never have to stop. Um, another way of doing it is to um, serpentine and double back on itself. So let's say we'll come back in and we'll hit on a line we already did. Then we can come back and continue. And then hit again. And then we can come back and hit again here. And then double back the other direction. And this will just add a little bit of texture to your serpentine lines. You know, depending on the effect you're going for, whether, you know, they kind of look like waves in the ocean, depending on what kind of, what, uh, kind of quilt you're building, but yeah, you just hit again, back up, and just continue on. So those are some of the techniques to do with the serpentine and uh, we will do them again with some practice sandwiches. So now we'll move into um, some swirls. Well, swirls are exactly what you think. I'm just going to come right off and do a swirl and then double back. Now you don't necessarily have to go all the way back to where you had started originally you can just start a new swirl and then double back and just fill in all these spots with swirls right and then I can exit if I wanted to and this is on the outside of your quilt square and jump back in in another spot. and you can echo, which we'll get into later. If you want to move to a different area to start a swirl, you can always echo over things you've already done, which is just kind of putting a border around the line you've already done. And then I'll start a new one. And then I'll echo over to here and start a new one. Sometimes you won't have enough room in a certain spot to do another swirl. So you can always just echo what you've already done to fill in that spot and then come out and start another one somewhere else. So those are your basic swirls. And um, yeah, just filling in the spot, having fun. You remember to echo if you get stuck in a corner if you get stuck over here and you don't know what to do, you can always just echo out of a corner, start a new one. And if you don't like echoing, you can always jump back into a line you've already done and try and trace over to get to another spot new too as well. Again, keeping your pencil on the paper as you're going and um, just having fun moving forward from there. So let's go to let's do some let's do some flowers or some paisleys and some leaves. So there are many many ways to do flowers. Uh, usually come off wherever you're starting on the edge of your square come off and do a little cup and then I start little little petals around the flower I'm doing. And then I like to echo back over what I've already done. 
and then start the next set of pe petals. And then echo. And then right here, this is where I'm going to start my next flower. So I'll just do the little, little half moon and start. Echo over those. More petals. And then I'm going to echo to over here to start my next crest moon and petals. Echo over the petals you just did. Next set of petals. And now I'm going to want to move over to here. So instead of starting new petals, I'll just echo over petals I'd already done before. And then start my crest moon and start another flower. Very easy, very nice effect. And again, starting with pencil and paper, you're not worried about messing anything up. You're just trying to learn a new technique and build on these free motion patterns that you're going to add to your repertoire. So there's some flowers. Now let's look at um, some leaves. So leaves, same thing. Start wherever you're going to start on your quilt or your practice sandwich and uh, draw a leaf. And then I just do just the shape of a leaf come around. I like to echo inside of that leaf and then have a little stem and then you can echo over that leaf and then start another leaf. And then echo over here and we'll add another one on the other side. Echo down here. Now, do I want to put another leaf in here? Why not? I'll throw one right in there. Now it's looking like I'm trapped. So, you can either travel down here and then echo your way out of here, or I could have just traveled along something I'd already made out to the top and started my next one. So another thing about leaves that I tend to do a lot is I end up end up going in the same direction which I'm trying to get away from. So I do try to start and then um, draw a leaf and then when I'm echoing over a leaf try and change directions just so it doesn't look like I'm following a specific uh, direction and pattern. Right, and then echoing again. Echoing is wonderful for filling in spaces you might not have filled in before. And if you don't feel like you can fit a whole leaf in there, you can always just echo out and find a fresh canvas. See, now none of my leaves are perfect. And I'm not worried about that. So, there's some leaves. Now we can look at uh, paisleys. Paisleys are another nice small little quilting design and it um, starts off with a bit of a teardrop. And then you just echo around that teardrop that you're doing. And then let's start another one right here.
And another one. And I want to go over here, so where I had left off, I'm just going to echo. And then I'll start another one right here. Again, just filling the spot, filling the space in. Now a lot of these uh, patterns I'm showing you will get um, a lot more advanced later on. Like we'll add leaves into the flowers and, and swirls off of the flowers with the leaves and some paisleys in there as well. So right now we're just learning to um, learn the basics and the fundamentals and then once we've, you feel like you've done the time in on the pencil and paper, which again, I highly recommend. This is how I start. This might not work for you. It might work for you. So I just try it out and see how it works. And then we'll start applying it to some practice sandwiches. And in future episodes, we'll go into a lot harder patterns and designs. And another thing I like to learn, depending on if you're the kind of person who does this to your quilt, um, at the bottom or wherever you start your quilt. I always like to learn um, your signature. Right, because I like to sign my quilts. So I always want to le learn my um, signature and how to quilt it. So let's move on to some practice sandwiches. I just went into my scrap cupboard and found any clear, you know, light fabric. Um, we'll probably use some red or black thread to uh, sew on, but we'll grab a piece of fabric and I'm just going to cut some random size squares, it doesn't really matter. And some batting. Now, you'll probably notice later on that you like stuff to pop, puff out a lot better. Um, so you'll want to use two layers of batting, but for this example, and for learning to free motion, we are just going to use one. So. I'm just going to put the batting in between the fabric, fold the fabric over, and now we'll have a canvas to work with. I'm going to iron these first so that they're not so wrinkly. So I'm going to make uh, four, five, six of these and we're going to practice everything we've just done on these practice sandwiches and we're going to do it freehand. We're also going to use the fabric marker and the chalk pen so you can move from drawing on pencil and paper to move to drawing on fabric so it's not quite a leap of faith for just going freehand. So uh, I'll meet you over at the machine. Okay, so we've got our Teflon sheet down. We've got our gloves, which I am putting on right now. And we have our practice sandwich that we ironed with the batting in between. So right off the bat, I like to make a border. I like to put a border around the whole sandwich so that um, it won't bunch up on you. So this is a good way to um, always have practice sandwiches when you're going to free motion quilt anyways. Because uh, your tension could be off since the last time you used it. And the last thing I want you to have to do is pull out the seam ripper on a quilt and have to start ripping those seams apart. So I like to, um, this is, I'm going to go through my process of how I start every time I free motion quilt. So I'll go down on my presser foot and I'll send the needle down and I'll bring it back up. Now I'll come up on my presser foot and I'll pull on this thread 
until the bobbin thread shows and I will pull that through as well. That way I don't have as much trimming to do underneath the quilt when I'm going to uh, clean it up at the end. So I'll go up and down and I'll do this a little about three or four times and move the quilt forward just a millimeter to get a new uh, fresh spot for the needle to go down and this is my way of tying uh, my thread. Instead of actually tying these two together I just go up and down about three four times to tie it together and not have to worry about it. So we'll go ahead and this will be how we um, check our tension as well. So I'm just going to do a straight line all the way down this quilt. Okay so the tension. You want it to look the same on both sides. You can see a little bit of the black coming through but that's because I'm using black on the top, gray on the bottom just to save uh, money and I already had that bobbin filled with gray so uh, my tension is set at four on my machine and my machine says that when I'm doing free motion quilting uh, my tension should be two to, two to six. Um, it may be four today, it may be six tomorrow um, depending on how much uh, dust you've got in your machine, when's the last time it's been cleaned, it seems to be fussy. Um, uh, this is a new needle, I always start a new needle when I start a new quilt. And um, so we'll continue this square. Okay, so we started off with pebbles. Uh, stones, bubbles um, first, so let's start off with that. Now, we drew it on paper, so now let's draw it on fabric. I'm going to use my Mark Be Gone pencil, or pen, and draw it. Now I'm going to start again from the side, from where I would be starting on my quilt, and I'm just going to start drawing some pebbles. Again, I'm going to try not to move or take my hand off. And we're just going to do a small little example here. And I'm going to show you that when you draw it, it's not necessarily how you're going to sew it. Um, I've gone away from the lines quite often, but they're a nice guideline to have when you're starting. So that looks like a good, good little chunk to start with. Okay, starting from the edge, I'm going to go down, bring my needle back up, lift my foot, pull the thread through, push those to the side over there, and come back down. Now I'm going to do this in the same spot about three or four times, just to tie that initial knot. So now let's go ahead and follow our little pattern. So now I've done my full circle. To be able to continue I am going to have to travel over what I've already done to be able to go to the next area. following your pattern, doubling over. It doesn't hurt if you go over a bubble more than once or twice. It actually adds a little depth to your quilting.
So I'll do the example of um, if I end it over here and I'm trapped and I want to go back to the one in there to fill in the spot. You can always just travel back on what you've already done. Just travel on the outside of those bubbles and then start the next one. And then I always advise that when you're done a pattern, you go back out to the edge of your square. Hit it in the same spot, moving it about a millimeter each way a couple times up and down just to lock it in. And we'll start our pebbles, freehand pebbles, again, down and up with your needle to catch that bobbin thread. Push those to the side. And then up and down a couple times to lock it in. And away we go. travel along these ones to get back down to the border and start another one just so I feel like I'm filling in my my um, corner there nicely So we can move on to our serpentines. Again, we can draw these first. I'll start from the corner again. And just start a little wave line. Another one. And just keep echoing it, you know, quarter inch distance between the two. And that looks pretty good for a start. So we'll start down here, and again, every time we get to the border, we'll just travel along the border to go our quarter inch, and then travel back down and keep moving our... Alright, again, needle up and down. Use my tweezers to catch that bottom bobbin. Push those to the side. Drop the foot again. Up and down a couple times to lock it in, moving the fabric back and forth just a little bit. And then follow our lines. All right, so I've made it to the border on the outside. I'm going to travel up that border and then come back. Hit the border again, travel along that line, and then the next serpentine. Now keep in mind, depending on how new or old your um, home machine is, I don't have a um, stitch regulator, so that's all controlled by how fast you move your fabric. Um, with time, it gets a lot better and a lot more consistent. Nice thing about it is you'll get used to certain 
directions you like to travel. Um, over time I've noticed I can travel backwards a lot easier and it not affect um, my consistency. Travel along the border again, come back down. Following that drawn line we drew. And we'll do this last one. And we'll travel back and forth, up and down, just to knot that thread. And there we have some serpentine. So let's go ahead and add to our serpentines with the little double backs and where they intersect into each other. So we'll end up starting here, following our serpentine line. I'll end up touching this old one, coming back down. Follow that line, head up the border, come back down, and I'll touch there, come back. It's all random, wherever you want to put them. So we'd end up coming back, going up, following our line again. You know, and maybe on this line I decide I just want to do a full serpentine without intersecting them into each other. Come back out intersect, maybe I'll intersect right away again, head back. So again, up and down on your needle. I'm going to, now if you do have it where it ties your threads on your machine, you don't need to bother with this step. But uh, my machine's a little older and doesn't have that function. So I'm going to go up and down a couple times to lock it in and start following my lines. So here's my first intersect. I hit there, now I'll travel backwards. Travel up the border that quarter inch, head back. And then you can stop at any time because you find your hands getting quite far away from the piece you're working on. Bring them back in and continue. So I didn't know where I was going there because my direction's that way so I'm just going to move it a little bit so I get a better look at where I'm going. And there you have it. So we'll move on to some flowers. And we're just going to build these off of our serpentine lines that we did. And we'll start with the fabric pen again first. So again, I like to start with a little, we'll start right here. I like to start with a little crest moon. And then do the petals. And then echo over top of those petals. 
and then I'll start another crest moon right here. Some more petals. Now I don't want to go back over here just yet, just because I feel like I'm going to add another one here. So remember we'll echo to the next spot we want to go to. And we'll draw a crest moon here. Some petals. Echo over top of those petals. And now I'm stuck. So I can travel back over the line I just did and add another crest moon right here. Start again. Now I'm going to echo over to here and I'm going to start another one right here. So it makes it very easy to be able to jump around and not feel trapped. So that way when you're free motion in a way you don't feel like you all of a sudden trapped yourself and you've got to cut your thread and start over. I just double back on lines even an extra echo over something that's already echoed. Once you're done the full design you were working on, you wouldn't, you'll never be able to tell that you think you made a mistake. And I don't believe there are any mistakes in free motion. Because this is just a creative means to finishing a quilt. And then I'll just echo to right here. And I'll do one more here to finish off this pattern. Echo over the petals. Another set of petals. Echo, echo over those petals. And then let's say you wanted to finish back over on a border or where you'd started already. You can either travel back the way you've come or you can re-echo. I'm going to travel the way I'd come. And then I'm going to echo over these petals right here. And then I'll end up right there. That's where I'll end it. So again, I'm going to go up and down on my needle so I can catch that bottom bobbin thread. Pull it to the top, less trimming on the bottom. Up and down a couple times to lock that thread in. And then start this new pattern. Do the petals. Echo over those petals. Just following our line. Travel along the serpentine line we did before. Start another crest moon. And then some petals. And then I'm going to follow this echo over here. Start another crust moon and some petals. Let's echo over top of them. And then start backtrack over that line I just did. Start the next crest moon. over top. So now I'm back at the border again and I'm trapped. So I can either echo again or travel back over top. So I'm just going to travel over what I've already done. And now I'm back over here. So then I'll re-echo over something I've already done. Looks like I got another flower starting here. So we'll just go ahead and start here. Crest moon. Petals. Echo over top. Echo over top here. And then it looks like I did another echo to get started on this one over here. Crest moon. Petals. Echo over top. Petals. Echo 
over top. Move my fabric so I can see where I'm going. And go over here, it looks like another crest moon starts right here. Petals. Echo. More petals. Echo over top of those petals. And then I want to go back to where I started. So I'm just, instead of traveling over the line I'm going to do, I'm just going to echo over top everything. It helps fill in space. It helps border things in. I think it looks nice. So, there we are, back into the serpentine line we started on. And there, you can see our flowers. I'm going to work on some swirls. And I'm just going to fill in this little area over here. Starting from right here. So draw a swirl. And I'm going to draw a swirl over here. Swirl here. It's really wherever you want to go with them. Swirl here. And then let's say I want to go down here. I'm just going to echo over the swirls I've already done. And then I can pop out here and do another swirl. Now I'm probably not going to be able to get a swirl in there. So I can always just go in here, echo twice to fill that area, start my next swirl. So now I've filled in this area quite nicely to then just keep continuing to fill in these areas with your free motion. Little echoes, I love echoing. Come back, swirl. You have them in every direction, go in every which way, does not matter. So starting from right here, I know it's hard to see with the light, this blue pen. You'll see it evolve as I bring it to life here. thing with swirls is if you get lost um, they're very easy to just incorporate anywhere so I see I did an echo here echo and then start it again change over to the red just so it may be easier for you to see and I'm gonna start um, right here in the middle of these bubbles with some paisleys now I don't norm I don't usually use chalk because it's it's a little bit harder I find to get out than the fabric pen because you just spray some water the chalk if you end up using a red on a white fabric I find it a little bit harder and more time consuming to uh, wash or steam that out. So we're going to do some paisleys here. And 
and all it is is a little teardrop followed by um, echoing and then I'll echo over to here and start one going over here try to get them going in all different directions Fill in this little spot over here. Echo out. Start another one. Now I want to fill in this area here so I can even just echo over another one one more time and then start it. And then travel on a line I've already done to then get to a new area. And then we'll fill that area in right there. Teardrop, echo over top. So now I'll just travel over a line I've already done and head back. So I'm kind of trapped in there again. I'll follow a line I've already done to get to a new spot and continue. And there we are. Paisleys. So, you can just see right here, this is a square on a quilt that you could have just filled in with free motion patterns. You know, and they all blend well together. It almost looks like coral at the bottom of, a, of an ocean. So, now you've got all this markings on here. You'll take spray. I usually take an empty Windex bottle or em empty anything that's got a spray nozzle on it and uh, spray it down and then um, I bring it over to the iron right away so it doesn't wrinkle. So I'm going to set this up on the iron table with some water and we'll see what happens once I get rid of all that color. All right, we'll jump back into the leaves. So I'll start from the edge again, and I'll just start with one leaf, echo inside of that leaf, do the little stem, and work my way out. Now I can echo back over this leaf and start another one over here. And then echo over here and start another one over here. And then we can travel back on, echo over a leaf we've already done to get to a fresh area to start another leaf. And then echo back down to the bottom here and maybe we'll start another one right here.
echo start another one echo over to a new spot start another one another one over here and we'll work with that for now So again, I've kind of trapped myself in there, so I'm going to work my way back to the edge and then echo over that leaf I just did. Get myself into a fresh spot to start the next leaf. So seeing how I don't normally like to end in the middle of uh, an open space, I'll always echo my way back to the edge. And there you have some leaves. So that's my signature. So I'm working my way back so I don't have to start and stop. And then if you double back on lines you've already done, it just kind of adds a little depth. spot for the eye. Just go up and down, same spot. And there you have my signature. So this concludes episode one of free motion quilting on your home sewing machine. 
Uh, we have many more videos coming out. Please hit a like and subscribe and give us any comments down below on future videos. We're going to have about two, three, four more videos in this series, getting more advanced as we go into free motion quilting. I'm Alay with Cottage Treasures Quilting and thank you for joining us.